you know, I'm willing to bet that you have a PC somewhere in your house that looks a lot like this one. Just a little bit outside of the Windows 11 minimum spec. And with Windows 10 end of service fast approaching, you can either recycle it, or you could do something a lot more fun, like make a home server. With a home server like we're gonna show you how to build today, you can have your own Netflix, your own automation services, your own RSS feed makers, all kinds of services on your home network. And we'll show you how to get started, but first, let's talk about our machine. This is a PowerSpec B740. It was originally a business class machine that one of our graphic designers here was using. It comes with an Intel i7 7700 and 16 gigs of RAM. But since this was a graphic designer's machine, we also added in a GTX 970. Now I know that that's not gonna be great for gaming nowadays, but it was really good for graphic design at the time. And I think it's gonna be great for transcoding media, which means if you have home movies on your server that you want to be able to play, this can do it. Now, anytime you're rehabbing an old machine like this, I recommend redoing the thermal paste. Take some isopropyl alcohol and some wipes and clean up the CPU and cooler. Then just put a little bit of new thermal paste on, reapply the cooler, and you're done. Our machine comes with an NVMe SSD. It's only 480 gigs, but that is plenty for our operating system. What we're actually going to need is more bulk storage. Since we only have four SATA ports, we want to take up half of those and use two 22 terabyte Western digital drives. These things are absolutely massive and they should last us a very long time. But since they are spinning disks, they are going to be a little bit slow on random reads and writes. That's why we're going to have a cache. So we got two inland one terabyte SATA SSDs. That should be more than sufficient for our one gigabit networking, and it will help us with random reads and writes and large transfers to and from our server. We did have one problem though. This only had one drive sled, which we fixed with a little bit of 3D printing. We went on to Thingiverse and we found an appropriate one. It was originally labeled Corsair drive sled, but this is a pretty common design and it worked perfectly with our power spec. So we printed up three of them so we could have enough for our drives. With our drives installed, it's time to install our operating system. And we're gonna go with TrueNAS because it's free, open source, and it's a great place to get started on your home lab journey. All right, so we have our flash drive with TrueNAS on it, and we're gonna go ahead and get started installing. This is gonna be kind of a brief overview of how to install TrueNAS. If you want a more in-depth tutorial, check out our Minis Forum N5 Pro video right here. But let's go ahead and get started. So let's power this on, mash delete to get into the BIOS. And we're going to install it on this Intel 450 gig SSD. Yes, I'm sure, ba ba ba. We're gonna configure that with the web UI. Now it's gonna go ahead and format that drive. TrueNAS is installed. So let's go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to reboot the system and pull out this drive. All right, TrueNAS is set up so we can get rid of this keyboard and monitor and get onto our laptop and do this over the web interface. It looks like we're gonna be able to reach TrueNAS at 192.168.1.59. Let's go ahead and do that. When you first log in to TrueNAS, it's going to tell you that your connection isn't private. Under most circumstances, I would say that's dangerous, go away. But since we set this up and it's on our own network, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is totally fine. Go ahead and proceed. Now, we're going to create our admin. So I'm gonna do a super secure password. And here we are in TrueNAS. Now, this might seem overwhelming, but we're gonna make it super easy and get started. So, we're going to make a new pool. A pool is basically a pool of data. So, we're gonna go with our share pool. Layout. We're just gonna do a mirror because there's only two drives. Disk size. We're gonna go with the 22 terabyte drives. Now, actual space on there is going to be 20 tibby bytes. That's what the TIB stands for. Uh, it's just a math thing. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, so, width two, that means that there's two drives. Number of VDEVs, one, because we only have the one pool. All right, hit next, next. We don't have any spares to deal with. A cache, we're gonna go with the one terabytes. Width by two, that way we can have a read and write cache because in order to have a write cache, we need to have it be redundant. Hit next step, layout, 
Oh, that's metadata. We don't need that. Next. And we're not going to do any dead ups. All right. We can create our pool now. So all of its contents will be erased. That's totally fine. Hit enter. So now that we have our pools, we're actually going to need to make an SMB share. But in order to do that, we need to have at least one SMB user. So let's go over to our users. Do, 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 credentials, users, and let's add. Let's go my name. So Jacob, and then my password. And my mouse just died, so that's super helpful. Love that for me. We're going to go ahead and check create a new home directory and make sure that SMB user is checked. So we're going to go to path and then go to that data set that we just created with Jacob. We're going to hit save. And yes, we do want to configure. SMB service is not running. Would you like to start it? Yes. Start. So now we should be able to go into our Windows browser and see TrueNAS on our network. Double click that and Jacob. Now we have 22 terabytes of usable space on our network and we already had the machine lying around. What are you going to do with your old Windows 10 PC? We want to hear about it down in the comments. And remember, if you want a micro center near you, comment hashtag I want a micro center near me. And we'll see you in the next one.